Cool. All right, next question. Uh, <coughs> sort of, sort of a question. Marcus Stang one. Um, best flex nibs. That's 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 what you got. Best flex nibs, Drew. All right. Well, hey, you know what? That gives us room to uh, to adapt this to what what we want to do. And I chose to adapt this, Marcus, <clears throat> to a super scientific, totally objective mm. countdown of my top five oh flex nibs, which okay. Brian is, will immediately say, well, hold on, there's not exactly, you can't say one's best, So, but I'm going to tell you, and then he can he can go do his Brian, Brian stuff here in a little bit. All right. All right. So number five, the Conklin Omniflex nib. Got to give him credit. They developed this thing with Yovo, so it's the only Yovo steel flexible nib and you can find it on Conklin pens and Monteverde pens. Um, <clears throat> it's super cool. The nib itself, I think, is great. I think sometimes the feeds that are attached to those can't quite keep up. Uh, and really, it's not, like, super flexible, kind of at all. It's a nice, bouncy nib. And honestly, if you don't use it as a flex nib and you just use it as a normal nib, it's really comfortable, has a nice bounce. So, I mean, I like it. It just doesn't flex a ton. And mm. if you do flex it a ton, it can get messed up kind of easily so um i would say it's a nice fun bouncy nib definitely recommend it but don't push it too hard and don't have super lofty expectations yeah yeah Gotta um keep it keep it realistic and yeah yeah absolutely and to be number four to, sorry to be fair here drew drew did mention you know marnaverdi and conklin i think conklin they came out with a pen called the conklin omniflex i think the nib itself is just called omniflex Oh you know, yeah, so it's like right. Yo, you know, right. Yaffa is the the yeah. the company Good that developed it, and they put it on both Conklin and Monteverde, but it's just Omniflex. So anyway, yep. you're right. It doesn't really you're matter. Right. Good but, point. You know, no, no, no. Thank you. That was helpful. Um, so number four, the Penider Quill Nib. Um, I think sometimes they call it Hyperflex as well. Uh, uh, they call it that. I, we don't call it that because we that don't call sends it that. the wrong message. <laughs> It does send the wrong message. That's a good point, Brian. So again, this is my number one most beautiful nib. I think that this nib is the most stunningly gorgeous nib, maybe other than that one limited edition Tibaldi nib, Brian, um, with mm. the eagle on that. Um, but normally, yeah, absolutely stunningly beautiful nib and has a great amount of bounce to it. The interesting thing about the quill nib, though, is that when it does flex, it, the tines don't really move apart as much as they just kind of move up. So they don't really mm. spread out very much, but they do bounce. And I think it's a very, very nice, very pleasant riding experience. So comfortable. And I love, love riding with this nib. Do you get, and, uh, the, sorry, yeah. not to break your flow. Do you get a lot of line variation with the, the no. quill nib? Okay. Yeah. Cause I, no. when you put it on here, I was like, I, 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 I call it more of a soft nib. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I put it on here because they call it a hyperflex nib, and <sighs> you know, it's 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 a bouncy nib, but okay. it's it's bouncy kind of like you know, honestly, a lot of pens on this list, like modern flex nibs, you know, they might they're probably more called bounce nibs than flex nibs, to, you know, realistically, they doesn't bounce, much, they move. Doesn't have much ring to it. Yeah, yeah, they, they move nib. up and down. They provide, it's kind of like if you wanted to have a more smooth ride in your car, you know, getting one of those like luxury sedans, you know, you're kind of just going to glide down the highway, you know, this mm. is that's what that's what the modern bounce nib can do for you. It can just kind of make it a more comfortable riding experience. So um, the quill nib looks good and feels good when you ride with it. Mm. Um, next up would have been number one, but uh, the Pilot 912 FA, and I say it would have been number one, if the feed could keep up with it. This is one of my favorites because mm. I love this pen. I way enjoy flat top pens more than round top pens. And the uh, 912, I think, is one of Pilot's best pens, but doesn't get a whole lot of love for some reason. It's expensive. Um, but the 912 FA nib, FA standing for Falcon, but it's definitely not the same nib that's on the Pilot Falcon. Um, it is a really, really fun nib to write with and honestly can give you some really good line variation, um, especially the extra fine and the fine, but you need to be patient with it. It is finicky. Writing angle has a lot to do with it. With Brian and I, our experience, our experience, like, like almost more than any other pen I've used, this one is yeah. seems like super finicky in terms of writing angle. That's where Drew is yeah, going he, with this. Yeah, yeah, I think it writes a little bit better with a higher angle, higher than mm -hmm. what I think most people are used to writing with. I yeah. think it's pretty common for folks to write with like a forty degree, forty five maybe, but this mm -hmm. thing writes a little bit better with a fifty. But yeah. even that's not super consistent. What I will say is you will enjoy this pen. 
if you are okay being adaptable. If you are fine getting a pen and saying like, okay, this pen doesn't really work well here. Let me kind of move my hand around a little bit. Let me maybe try doing the underwriting thing with this pen. If you're fine with that, if you're used to that, then yeah, sure, you would love this pen. But if you're like, no, this is the way I write, this pen needs to fit my writing style, it might not be the right pen for you. Yeah. Um, so you, just keep that in okay, mind. Okay, where do you feel about that, Drew? Because I do... I get where people are coming from. They're like, I'm going to write how I'm going to write and the pen should conform to me in order for it to be considered like a good pen or a pen that I like. But if obviously everybody is different. I mean, we've seen probably more than your average person. We've probably seen more people hold pens in more different ways. Some people do some just crazy things, like things I could not have even conceived. And to them, it's totally normal. And I'm yeah, like, they'll what? send us a picture of their writing angle. And I'm like, that that's your foot. <laughs> Why are you so okay? All right, but like that's different. I mean, that's cool. Like no judgment, but I'm like, okay, that's why you you see a snapshot of a comment somewhere, and somebody's like, this pen is the worst thing I've ever written with. But then when you get to know and you see and you compare, it, especially if you go to like pen shows and you can actually see in person, you know, talk to any nibmeister. Like, there's no better way to grind someone's nib to then when you're in person because you see how they write and you're like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. Let me adjust that for you. But it's like very individualized, which is a double-edged sword. And, and very, very. So and I definitely like certain <coughs> pens are just, some pens are like made to be work in a pretty specific way, which like these this this one is. Some pens are made to be much more universal. And I think it's the ones that are much more universal that are kind of more universally talked about as the good writers. But doesn't mean that it's necessarily a better writer. It's just a broader, more consistent writer for more people. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That is the question. Do you think the pen should be, you know, mm. more, you know, one size fits all or, you know, do you need to adapt to work with the pen? Mm. And we've had that conversation about the Lam the Lamy 2000, you know, yep. more than a couple times. Yep. We've had the conversation about this. So like really, any flex uh, you know, comes up, that comes up. Yeah. 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 Good, it, it just depends there. If you, I mean, if you do want more mm. of a one size fits all pen, they're definitely out there, but they're not on this list for sure. That's a good video idea, Drew, just having that as its own topic. Like, should your pen conform to you or should you conform to the pen? I don't know. There yeah. might be something there. We'll think, yeah, we'll think we can talk it. about that. We'll then give us your thoughts. What do you think? Like, do you, when you're shopping for a pen, do you when you get it, are you saying like, okay, I might need to kind of you know shift my you know situation around a little bit, or do you say like, hey, this isn't going to work for me because I have a grip, it's not going to change. I need to buy a different pen that's a little bit more conducive to my hand. Um, I'll be curious to hear that. Um, bringing it back down to number two on my list i put down the noodlers flex nib um it's durable very robust you can actually flex this thing a lot but it requires pressure like it's it's a you got to push down like almost to an uncomfortable amount like if you push down as hard as you need to on this nib <laughs> on some of the other nibs on this list you're gonna mess up that nib yeah true. um but the new the noodlers nibs like they they, they spring back surprisingly well, well it's, it's that, kind of it's astounding that, it's that deep slit it's that does really yeah long tines you know maybe the i don't know if the the steel itself is different it might be a different alloy or something to or just maybe the way it's ground you know um like there's there's a term called spring back or bounce back that you know basically when a metal is bent how how quickly i guess is it going to bend back and how you know how um resilient is it i guess towards mm -hmm. towards being bent noodlers is is up there on all of that like yeah it'll it'll take whatever you put down on it but you gotta you gotta go you gotta go after it you gotta go after yeah. that flex <laughs> yeah and like don't push that hard on like the conklin or sorry conklin the omniflex nib or you know the Paniter quill nib yeah. like that that's not you don't need noodlers pressure on those so it's a little weird and then but you get some crazy nibs like the mm -hmm. one brian just described the stock you know flex nib with that really really long yeah. you know couple of slits there or a couple of times and then you've got the noodlers triple tail which is crazy you've got two separate um slits which makes three tines um and that thing you can get insane variation on <sighs> like you're like it's probably the the triple tail is probably the wettest line you could put down in any you know currently manufactured fountain pen it's pretty dang wet um, yeah maybe with with the exception of like a you know 6.0 
pilot parallel. I don't know. Um, it's still it's a lot of ink. It's a lot of ink. I mean, that yeah. On. I guess I guess it's not as wide. Yeah, but but it's like it a, is more ink. And like in terms of like a concentration of like volume yes. of it, like saturation <laughs> yes. level of ink. Volume yes. wise, yes. Yeah. Um, but then of course you have to deal with the finickiness of the pen. So it's weird putting this on number two because the pens themselves do require some finagling here and there. Uh, you could get one that works just perfect out of the box or you need to heat set it or, you know, pull out the feed, put it back in, kind of work with it. So that certainly may not be your cup of tea. It is some people's cup of tea and often not others but uh and also they smell bad um that's that's a thing you know noodler's pens bad surprise bad, surprise people with their odor word, drew it smells what it smells no 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 stink is a subjective word <laughs> smell is just a fact no, you said there, there is bad a, bad is not a subjective word i didn't say that <laughs> i said did I? did I did i say they smell or did they say you said it smells bad I did. Okay. Yeah. Well, they do. <laughs> they do. They do. Okay. I'm trying to weasel my. I'm trying to weasel my. It's, come on, it's man. To me, Who thinks they smell good? To me, like sometimes. Don't it's like, even. If Don't, I if no. I haven't showered for like you know how sometimes oh like, god like no, if you shower no. no 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 if you like shower in the morning you're like normally but then you like oh, miss god. you miss one morning so like by the nighttime of the next day you're like you're not you're not like straight up gross. But you just like you missed you missed your no oh, you missed your normal that, rhythm, and then you also realize you're like, did I put on deodorant this morning? And then you kind of like <laughs> smell check it a little bit, and you're like, ooh, ooh, it's got a little spice to it. You know what and, I mean? And I, like, and I always say, at least I don't smell like a noodler's pen. It's got you musk. Know, that, that's, I would say it's got musk. No, oh no, no. When you open a fresh noodler's pen, Brian, it it's, hits you. It it's got it is a, a muskiness it is a, to it. It's musky. No, it's an impact. Uh, no, it it is a punch. It is a, a fresh noodler's pen whiff, man. It's got punchiness to it. It's got it's got strength. It's like, you know, it's like there are some cheeses that that many would say maybe don't smell that's great. That's true. But they taste wonderful. That's true. It doesn't doesn't mean that it's bad cheese. It just that's how it smells. So that's kinda how it's kinda where I fall I with the noodles I, pens. Okay, I respect that analogy. That is accurate. I'm, but, real, I'm really stretching here. It's pretty, it's pretty, <laughs> univer are, but, it's pretty universally commented about as not being a yeah, particularly pleasant yeah. smell. But Brian, Brian it's, will it's always like, play it's, devil's advocate. Like in any conversation, he could, it could be a topic he totally agrees with. Like we'll be in a meeting, and everybody will be in agreement. And Brian, in his mind, will be like, "I totally agree with this." But yet he'll say, "Like, well, hey, how about this? How I'm about like, this? Like nobody, totally... else, nobody else is even trying to argue the point. I'm just being <laughs> no. instigator." Well, to, to be fair, like, so we did the, if you've ever done uh, like Myers-Briggs like stuff or there's a website called 16personalities.com, no affiliation, um, but uh, they have like personality like names to each of the 16, you know, MBTI profile things. Uh, my name is literally the debater. So uh -huh. yeah, I will, I will argue a point just for the mental jousting of it. Yeah. Which, meanwhile, I'm the campaigner. So I'm just like, you need to be into what I'm into because this is cool. Listen to me and yeah. enjoy it as much as me. There you go. Which just absolutely strikes true. Yeah. Um, fountain pens are awesome. <laughs> Buy them. Well, they, All right. They number are. one. They are. Number one best flex nib, in my opinion, which is a fact, mm. the Pilot Falcon. Um, artist formerly known as Namiki Falcon. Mm. One of the most enjoyable writing experiences you can get with a modern manufactured fountain pen, mm. bar none. You will be hard pressed to find no, like, someone who has used one of these things and disagrees yeah, like with mass that. produced fountain pen. You can get custom grinds and things like that, but yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah, yeah, like yeah. available mm. stock from the manufacturer kind of thing. For sure. It, it, it's lightweight, feels comfortable, looks good, especially the black with the silver trim. Thank mm. you. Um, and can provide you with that it's probably of on this list it's probably the most like what you would expect from a flex pen than anything else because it does give you line variation it does bounce it feels good it looks amazing there's no other nib that looks quite like the pilot falcon nib um and uh, now it's not going to do anything super crazy there are a lot of videos online of people going absolutely crazy doing insanely beautiful but complicated calligraphy with these things but a lot of those videos are Pilot Falcons with custom grinds on them. So mm. um, you may not be able to push it to quite the same limits that you might have seen on you know certain viral YouTube videos. However, you can get some good results with them. And uh, I, I think that um, it's if you, even if you don't, like some of the other nibs I mentioned, want to flex, you will still get a really, really pleasant writing experience. And if you do want to flex, pick the extra fine or the fine. It might feel a little toothy, but be gentle. 
don't push down any pressure and you will get a ton of line variation a surprisingly large amount of variation compared to other currently produced flexible <laughs> nibs bounce nibs now one, and that's my list one one brian point, one point agree with all of it one point i i largely do um one one point of clarity on that is the pilot falcon that we carry has the soft nib that's all we've ever carried there is a falcon that comes with what they call the hard nib or just like the standard nibs the shape is the same like the overall shape the look the beak you know design and all that it's just a stiffer nib you know so it's it's one of those things that like in the u.s and with us and all that we just call it the pilot falcon it's technically the pilot falcon with a soft fine or soft medium soft extra yeah. fine can you that's even get the hard actually, nib in the u.s uh i don't think so I don't think so. You can. That's all we've ever seen. But I just need to clarify that that is technically a soft nib. So anyway, true. Um, yeah, I would. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty much in agreement with Drew on most of this, except that you know I think the the noodlers, especially the Ahab, to me, I do like the triple tail a lot, and the triple tail does not have the distinctive smell that Drew. Um, it still discussed. has a smell. No, it's it not. No, it's a different. Oh, it uh, does. No, it's a different. Uh, it's a different material. It smells like something. You're just scarred. No, it You're does. Just smelling it by association. No, no. Nah, if you, no, it's not it definitely. The same. It's not it, the same. It's not the same. I didn't say it was the same. It has a smell though. If you, you know, took out a pilot metropolitan, uh, not not, a, not a, that's metal, but if you took out any other resin pen, okay, smelled that, and you smell the triple tail, the triple tail, you're gonna say, wow, this one smells and this one doesn't. I mean. It's not as funky as an Ahab. There's just, but there's just there there's is there of, is something. It's a lot of smells in the world, you know. <laughs> oh God! Some Here things we go. smell one way, other things it smells, smell another way. It's all it is, just it is smell. a much less it's a much less severe smell. I'll say that. Severe is a very strong word, but you have you know. to. Oh my God! You have to get it closer to your nose to smell it than you do. Like here, here yeah, here's an yeah. Ahab. Here's an Ahab smell. Here's a triple tail smell. <laughs> oh come on! I think I think the triple tail is way less of a smell than that. You gotta have. Like, I, I like. I, I do like the like, triple tail. You almost need like nose contact to smell the triple tail. Okay, please let like, in the comments if you have a triple tail. I'm, I can either how, be wrong. How or far right. away from your face do right. you need a no, triple do, tail? Would you, would you call it? Would you call it a stinky pen? That that's all. That's. Yeah, we'll, we'll let the people decide, Brian. St see, now you're going to say all of the terms that you're using here are derogatory smell terms. Would you call it a smelly pen? Do you think the pen has a strong odor? Even smelly, it's like what is that? That's like saying a food is tasty. Like taste is. I couldn't say. I couldn't say good or any, bad. Like smell. Yeah, I couldn't smelly. say any adjective. I couldn't say any adjective that you would be happy with, Brian. This You'd is be like. This well, is my, what is this? Is my just being, what is, being what is, a pain in what your is, side here? What does resin <laughs> even mean, really? What is what is a pen? I mean. <laughs> You actually bring up a good point. Resin, Stop it! Resin can mean a lot of different... I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm really just being a pain. <gasps> okay. Oh, my goodness. I've got the next question, Brian. I'm going to ask you something, wait, wait, wait. and no, oh, no, no, my no. God. I had more relevant things to say. Okay, sorry. All right. So, I, I agree. Smells aside, um, <laughs> I actually really like the Ahab nib. I think especially for value sake, I think the Ahab is is number one um, for like flex for the money. And actually in terms of results, like line variation, consistency of performance, especially for the, you know, degree of variation that you get, the Ahab is pretty dang tough to beat. Um, that said, the actual writing experience is not you know, like my number one favorite, just the way that it feels on the page, like that extreme amount of flex, the amount you have to press it, the, you know, the, all the all the senses that you're feeling while you're writing with that pen, you know, s smell being all of the senses, smell, <laughs> smell, touch, you know, all the the visual. Like the Ahab is not my favorite like pen shape, uh, but purely like in terms of when I want what I think is, you know, a dramatic like verbiage like script on the page, I'm I'm very pleased with the performance I get out of an Ahab. Is it the most pleasurable writing experience with all senses involved? Pro probably not. So I would, for me, it's like it depends on how you how you would interpret this question as best. So that's that's just my own little thing in there. But I did want to throw one one other pen in here, since most of the pens that Drew mentioned on this list are not actually flex pens. They're just 
gold nib pens or soft nibs or whatever but that's fine that's cool no judgment um that, a lot of them are throw. called flex pen well we don't call them flex pens <laughs> because, because we don't want to, we're like oh gosh people really like think if flex i if, is if, one if, thing. if i only if i only you know said best flex nibs on nibs that we actually thought were flex nibs i this would be like a list with two pens on it probably um we use the term very selectively because we've been scarred from people having very assumptive expectations about what a flex pen should be able to do um which is fine but that's gotten better over the years um it i has. would so all that said i would throw the pilot e95s in the mix somewhere because you can get some line variation it's a very bouncy nib with some good line variation and the nib you know got a lot of good nib size options on there and it's an inlay nib it's really cool so e95s i think should be thrown into consideration there not as like a, i'm writing with a pen to get flex all the time but it's more of like a, i want a sleeper like a sleeper pen with some line variation i want to just bust it out every now and then e95s is a great one for that